I have just encountered a program that's gonna change the way I use Git forever. Seriously, check this out. When I open Lazy Git, I can see my whole entire Git repository laid out in front of me. All of the tools are in all of these different panes. I could stage commits over here with the space bar. I could unstage them with the space bar again. I could go into each commit and just stage certain hunks that I like. I could go down to my local branches pane and create a new branch just like this. I could even stash my changes and then view them down here in the stash changes pane. Then I could pop them if I want to, go back up, stage my commits, and then commit them. This is seriously so amazing. I love lazy Git so much. The more I use it, the better it gets. I'm excited to tell you about it, so let's get into it. Now, I've been a developer for a long time, 12 years to be exact, but who's counting? God, I'm getting old. Ever since I became a developer though, I've used Git and I've always loved it. Git is an amazing source control program that has extremely powerful features. And I've always loved the command line. I never got used to any of the Git GUIs out there. It just always seemed to kind of be lacking, especially considering I always use Vim and Tmux. So when I used a GUI for Git, it just immediately took me out of the zone and out of my flow state. So for the longest time, I've only really used the CLI for Git. And hey, I like to think I'm pretty good at it, but I have one main problem with the CLI. That problem is merge conflicts. You see, when you pull or push code that has different changes in the same file, in some cases, Git cannot rectify those changes. Essentially, Git cannot merge them together automatically, which causes a merge conflict. So you have to tell Git which changes you want to actually have in your code base, therefore resolving the conflict. Now, typically with merge conflicts, I use Vim diff. As much as I love Vim, I hate Vim diff. It just doesn't work great. I never get the colors to look decent. It's just kind of crap. And for Mac OS, I just haven't found another good solution for managing merge conflicts, at least until now. Now, before we jump straight into merge diffs in lazy Git, let's go over some of the other functionality that has to offer. It's truly an amazing tool and I wanna show it off. Let's figure out how to install this thing first. If we check out the repo on Git, we can see that there are plenty of ways to install it. There's binaries built for literally every system. Well, maybe not literally every system, but pretty much. And as we scroll down in this repository, we can see that there's a list of features. Each piece of this list has a nice little definition and a video that goes along with it to show you how to use every single little feature that Lazy Git supports in Git. So after you watch this video, check out the repository. It's really informative. So now we hit the installation section and we can see that there's a homebrew entry. So it's pretty simple. We just wanna install brew install Lazy Git. So if we just copy and paste the command into our terminal, it will install Lazy Git. Now, of course, I already have Lazy Git installed in my system. So that will install Lazy Git on your system if you're using Mac OS. And of course, check out the repository. It lists all the other binaries and all the other releases. I'm sure there's a way to get it pretty easily for your system, whatever you're using. Okay, so now we have Lazy Git installed. Let's go over a few of the more simple scenarios we want to use Lazy Git for, and then we'll jump into some more interesting stuff. So if Lazy Git is installed correctly, it should be in your path, and you can just run it with Lazy Git from the command line. So if we're in a repository and we run Lazy Git, we will see the Lazy Git interface. If you look in the bottom here, we can see that one through five means jump to panel and HL means scroll left or right. If you want, you can do one, two, three, four, five. You can see that that goes through all the panels. Now in our first panel here, we're in files, and this will show us all of the changes in the Git repository that have not yet been committed or staged. Next up is a pane that shows all of our local branches, and we can scroll down and up, and we can look at each one of these. By the way, I am scrolling up and down with Vim key bindings. You can also use your arrows. And then the next pane is our ref log. These are just all the commits in our Git history. And then the very last pane is stash. This is actually a list of all of the items you have stashed from your Git history. We're going to show off that in a little bit. So now let's start off with something simple. How do we stage a file that we want to commit? Well, while we are in the files pane, we can hit question mark and that will bring up all of the key bindings for that pane. And while you're in here, you can hit slash and it will filter for any of the key bindings you want to search for. So let's say I want to commit. I search for commit and there I go. These are all of the filtered results with the word commit in them. And of course, now I can see that commit changes is the letter C, but I don't want to commit changes. I want to stage my changes to be committed. So if I hit question mark again, I look at stage, 
I can see that that is A is stage all space toggle stage. And then you can also hit enter to toggle individual hunks or lines to stage. So let's check that out. I hit escape to exit the key bindings pane and I hit space and that toggles this file to being staged. How amazing is that? Super simple. So hit space again and now the file is unstaged. Okay. But what if we want to stage certain hunks? We can hit enter and that will bring us into the unstaged changes pane. We can scroll up and down using Vim key bindings or up and down arrows. And on each line, we can hit space to stage just that one hunk of changes. So it's super simple. You can see down below the stage changes update every time we stage another hunk or another line. That's pretty amazing. I can hit escape to get out of there. And I'm just gonna hit space, space to toggle and untoggle the whole file so that we're just back to square one. But what if I wanna create a new branch before I stage any of these files? Well, I can go down to my local branches section and hit question mark to check out my key bindings for this pane. If I search branch, I see that the key binding N means new branch. How amazing is that? This is so simple. So I get out of this hitting escape. I type N for new branch and I call this new branch debugging baby enter. And just like that, we created a new branch. Awesome. So now I'm in my new branch and I want to stage these files and then commit them. So I hit space to stage my file. And I can hit question mark again just to check how do I commit something. I see it's the letter C. So I type the letter C and I can type in my commit summary, add debugging. And I hit tab to toggle the focus and now I have a commit description. This will add debugging to the repo, tab, enter. And if I look down into my commits pane, I can see that this new commit was now added. Really cool. So now I want to push these changes up to the origin. So I hit question mark again, just to check, how do I push? I search for push and I see it's capital P. So I'm going to do that capital P to push. Awesome. So now I just push my changes to my new branch called debugging baby in my repository. That's amazing. Okay, so let's do something a little more interesting. Let's say that there's been a change in my main branch and I'm on my branch debugging baby trying to make some commits. I want to make sure that my branch is up to date. So I want to rebase my branch onto the main branch just to make sure my history is correct. So how do you do that in lazy git? Well, we can go down to our branches pane. We go down to main. We, we can see that we are checked out on debugging baby. We're already checked out on this branch. So we go down to our main branch and we hit R, lowercase r. That will give us a new pane that gives us some options for rebasing. Now I just want to do a simple rebase. I'm not going to edit any of the to-do comments or anything like that. So let's just hit S. And while it was rebasing, it had a conflict. Okay, so we see we have some conflicts here. And this right here is the most amazing part of lazy Git because I hate the conflict resolution tools that are currently there. I don't like Vimdiff and I don't like some of the other ones that exist already, but in lazy Git, it's so good. If I go down to the file that has a conflict and hit enter, I'm brought into a conflict resolution selection tool kind of thing. So now if I hit question mark while I'm in here, it'll give me options to resolve my conflicts while I'm in this file. And we can see that it's kind of interesting that it's very similar key binding wise to how you would stage commits or stage hunks. Space will actually pick a hunk that you want to pick for your conflict resolution. And then to select previous and next conflicts, you can do left and right. Okay, so let's see how this works. So with this commit, I want to keep this hunk. So if I hit space, that resolves a conflict because that was the only one and I chose which one I wanted to keep. Okay, so all merge conflicts are resolved. Continue. Enter, I'm assuming, means yes. Awesome. Oh my gosh, there's another conflict. Okay, let's check this one out. V for view conflicts. Then we go down to the file. We have Vim Fugitive in one. And then the other one, we don't have Vim Fugitive. Instead, we have trouble. But you know what? I want to keep both of these. How do I do that? Well, let me try and edit the file. I hit E and that opens up my editor. So then while I'm in Vim, I can remove this, remove all of this and remove this and then remove that. And that is the file that I want. I want to keep both Vim Fugitive and Trouble. Now I can write and quit. I enter the lazy git and now all the conflicts are resolved. Each conflict I can do one by one and handle them each in git. And if each conflict is simple enough, I could just sort of stage that hunk and that resolves a conflict too. Enter to continue. Awesome. Now my rebase is done. So if I shift P to push, I have to hit enter to now force push. So then I push and everything is up to date. My history looks great. I've resolved all my conflicts and I've rebased my branch onto main. Awesome. 
Now, I hope you can see here that with my workflow, which includes NeoVim, there's a free course on NeoVim on my channel, by the way, check that out. It's easy for me to stay in my flow state because I'm already in the terminal. I'm already in a terminal-like tool. This is very similar to Vim for me. And if I wanna edit my files one by one, if I have something like a merge conflict or something like that, it brings me right back to NeoVim. And when I leave, it brings me right back to LazyGit. It's just an awesome tool and it keeps me in my flow state. And it's also very, very intuitive. I can figure out these commands on the fly by just hitting the question mark or following the prompts. Lazy Git's really well done in that way. So that's just one way I like to use Lazy Git. There's a million others. There's even other plugins that have been developed for Lazy Git. It's really an awesome thing that's turning into a really great little ecosystem for Git. And honestly, I just want to give a special thanks to Jesse Duffield and anyone else who's contributed to Lazy Git. This is an amazing piece of software right here. I think it's so freaking cool. And I'm just scratching the surface here. There's a million things you can do with Lazy Git, and I suggest you read the docs, check out the repository, shoot, maybe even donate if you want. I think that's a good idea. It truly is an amazing program and this is my go-to get GUI. Get a good GUI. I gotta get good GUI. No, no. Anyways, thanks nerds.